in the Emerald Isle. Something unexplainable is happening. Tonight, prepare to witness the most frightening event in horror podcast history. A journey into the depths of horror history. First Class Horror presents The Class Horror Cast. Evil wears many masks, but pure horror wears only one. Support First Class Horror on Patreon for as little as one dollar. Can't get enough of the horror? Carve yourself a deal from official merchandise only on Teespring. Join us on all social media at First Class Horror. We have such sights to show you. Lynn Porco is an upcoming actor and one to watch out for. While many know him from his role in Leprechaun Returns, Lyndon has also starred in Little Man, Channel Zero Butcher's Block and Cult of Chucky. Lyndon is a true professional and doesn't take no for an answer. We talked about his desire to direct, returning to the Leprechaun franchise and even writing his own story for the Leprechaun franchise. He also gives some fantastic advice. You guys don't want to miss this one. I hope you all enjoy Okay, so I guess first things first, man, I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, thank you for thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for watching the film and, uh, and reaching out. Yeah, I, can, I actually can't wait to get into that in a few minutes. Um, just to start with, is there anything you'd like to plug, promote, or where can people check you out or follow you? Uh, yeah, so basically you can just check me out on all platforms uh, at Lyndon Porco. Um, that includes uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, and TikTok as well. Um, yeah. So. Oh, you're on TikTok as well? Yeah, oh, for sure. Awesome, love that. I'll, I, all the links will be down below anyway, so anybody who's listening, um, all the Lyndon links will be down below. Um, okay, so... First question I always kind of ask everybody um, is, would you class yourself as a horror movie fan or can you remember your first horror movie or experience, I guess? Yeah, so um, especially when I was younger, my family uh, didn't really watch too many horror horror movies and uh, films or TV, TV shows. So I wasn't really into the whole horror aspect of it. But um, my friends were, and I remember going over that to their place for a sleepover. And the first like horror movie I really saw was The Poltergeist, nice. and yeah, it was it was a, definitely an interesting experience because um, we we were watching it, and, and uh, my fr- my uh, my friends, family, and parents always brought the best snacks whenever we went over. So I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to watch a great movie. We're going to have some great snacks, and we're going to chill and watch this. And then I'm watching this, and I might have been more scared than anything in my entire life when I was watching this for the first time. Um, and I just remember being like, why, why are we watching this? Why, why? I, I, so back then I, I was like, I didn't find this fun to like be scared shitless basically. Yeah. Um, so, so we ended up watching the whole thing and I was like, looking back on it now, the poltergeist is a great, great movie. Um, looking back on now as, as, uh, as being in horror and, and I've acted in it and I've, I've watched, um, a, a decent amount of horror now, but I just remember that as my first experience into horror mm-hmm. and I wasn't enjoying it at the time. Um, and, and I kind of continued to not, I think that kind of continued not to enjoy it all the way up until, um, I really started acting in it more and more. Um, I do remember this one time where I was at uh, the movie theaters, my parent, my uh, friends dragged me, um, to go see a, a horror movie. And I, they always teased me about it because they knew I wasn't, I, I was scared. I was very scared of horror. Mm-hmm. So we went and saw the movie, uh, Luigi and, yeah. um, 
I went the whole time. I would I was in a sweater. I would pull the, the sweater up over my eyes and, and, and like pull the the hood down. And I was looking through the little cracks. And um, I was like, this is not this is not fun for me. I was getting so scared. And I remember going home that night, and I actually had nightmares going to sleep. I was like, this is not cool. I don't like this. Uh, I was always just super scared of horror. And then when I started acting more into it and, and being more a part of it, I've, I, I, I love horror now. I, I, because I know how the way, um, they're filming it, 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 I look at it, I think from a different perspective now than obviously I used to. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't too much of a fan back, back in the day, but, but now I, I really do love horror. It's um, it's funny you say that because I've talked to several people recently who've also mentioned the poltergeist, but mentioned the fact that their initial experiences, it's not always, um, you know, I saw a movie and fell in love with the genre. A lot of people seem to have that opinion that they saw a movie that scared the shit out of them so much that they kind of <laughs> stayed away from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's exactly, exactly what happened. And, um, so, so later on in life then, when, like, when did it become a thing for you, like, a, I guess, a, a realistic possibility to, to get into the movie business and into acting and stuff? When did that all initially kick off? Wow. Um, so that originally kicked off where my mom saw an ad in uh, the Winnipeg Sun um, and it said that Vern Troyer is going to be at the, the world of wheels. And he has the same, he had the same type of dwarfism as me, mm-hmm. um, RIP to, uh, to Vern Troyer. Um, so m- my mom was like, Hey, you know, this would be a good, uh, good thing to go to, to talk to a fellow little person and, and kind of, you know, get some advice of, of life and not necessarily talking about the, the, the acting business industry. Um, but yeah, we ended up going there, and one thing led to another. And I met him backstage, which then led to having lunch with him, which then led to me, him inviting me up onto the stage where people would come to him and he would sign autographs and have me just literally sit beside him and um, you know talk to him throughout that. And so that truly was a, a life changing. Um, part of my life because through the talks at, at, at the lunch and um and whatnot we, we talked about being a little person but then he also was interested in my life and, and asked what I was into so I did a couple of things back when I was younger I, I, I started acting um when I was uh when I was five or six I did a couple of of sh- uh toy shoots for Toys R Us mm-hmm. um back when I was five and um because I because everybody thought I was I was a pretty cute baby which which I I think I was so um that that was pretty cool but um yeah so so through all those things and him asking me uh those questions I told him that I was interested in acting it's always been something I've been I've been interested in I wanted to explore so he got his um his manager at the time to, you know, help me out and, and see it, see if uh, she could get me anything that uh, would, you know, amount to something or whatnot. And one thing led to another after that. And about two weeks to to a month later, I get a call saying, "Hey, you know, they need this this little person um, for the body." Uh, to, to be like, we need him to be physically active, we need him to, to do some stunts and, and all these things. And so I sent a tape in of me, you know, playing sports and mm-hmm. you know, nothing, nothing too crazy, but more just me like running around showing my uh, physical ability. And two weeks after that, I family gets a phone call. She calls us and she says, uh, Hey, you know, get everybody else on the line. Um, they want to hire you, but also they want to fly you down to do a, to do a screen test. And it, it was, so that was little man and with the Wayne brothers. And so that is really what, um, uh, kind of got me and, and pushed me into the industry. 
and them treating me like absolute gold was something that made me, I think, made the experience very unique and wanted me, wanted to stick around um, the industry. So, yeah. And um, that's crazy because, I mean, I watched, um, you have a, a, a short documentary called Linden's World, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way. Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, that so that wasn't originally uh, supposed to be in in the special special features at all. They kind of did that on their own because um, uh, because of how genuine they are. Uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting it. I, it kind of just happened, and then you know ended up coming to my school and and, and shooting a few things as well. But uh, that just goes to show that um, the Wayne Brothers. Um, and I, I say in the in the short uh, documentary in there that you know my first family is obviously my my real family, but but my second family was them because of how how much they treated me like uh, like one of them, and and that is something that I will will never forget and that I will always cherish. And it's it's um it's crazy because like that was even over here that was a pretty huge movie, and I mean you kind of just slid in and seemed like an absolute pro, like just from watching the documentary even and hearing everybody talk about you and just how professional you were. And like, I mean, at the time you were very young and to be able to step up to the mark like that and seem like somebody who was doing it for a lifetime really is quite incredible. Uh, Thank you very much. I, uh, that, that, that truly means a lot, and I, I can't thank you enough enough for that. Um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was an eye opening experience. I, I think um, uh, my, my personality kind of helped help me through that process, mm-hmm. as well as being able to um, ask questions and for them to you know really be um, so. Because I was so young, I, I, I was nine years old at the time. Even I, even though I was so young, they treated me like like a professional right from the beginning. So I think that also helped as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and to to have that and to be able to be to be free on set um, was something that uh, definitely uh, flourished uh, my my abilities as well as. Um, being able to be creative uh, with with Marlon and Keenan and Sean um, through the process of, of, of filming. Yeah, because I mean, you, like you really didn't come across like a, and I don't mean this in a a bad way, but you didn't come across as a, a normal nine year old kid. Like you seemed super <laughs> professional and like, like you said, like nobody really spoke about you as a kid. It was like you know he's he's the pro, he's the star of the show, basically. And we don't really, it's not like, you know, nobody was bringing you around by the hand or having to explain everything to you in a, maybe a more childlike way. It just yeah. seemed like everybody was on the same professional level, which was really good to see. Yeah, it was, uh, that, that was awesome to, to hear them say that, uh, about me as well. I was, uh, it may, it may, it makes you feel really good when when somebody and and people who are of that uh, of that caliber mm-hmm. um you know say that say that about you and so from there then so that that movie takes off and and does what it does so what happens from that point so at, at 9 years old at the time um uh, you know i was still living in a small town of, of Winnipeg Manitoba um in Canada so things weren't too busy in in, in Winnipeg at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, so I just really hunkered down and started taking acting class um, every every week, every month, every year. The I, I I think the total in my lifetime as of right now of time I've taken off from from an acting class would be maybe the span of you know one year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's through, I think like 15, 15, 16 years of, uh, of doing it. Um, so I've, I've really, because of the, the movie little man, I've, I fell in love, truly fell in love, love with 
the whole process of what goes on behind the scenes to what goes on in front of the camera. And so I really just tried to bunker down and, and try and be the best um, actor that, that I could possibly be. But that also goes to show the, the, the teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. the teachers that I've had and, and uh, what, what they've helped me with through, through the years. Um, I ended up moving to, to Vancouver after I was done high school, so that's about five years ago now. Mm-hmm. And um, again, um, I've, I've had uh, one of the best teachers in the world right now. Um, uh, her name is Deb Podowski, and uh, she has uh, taught me uh, not only acting uh, abilities, but uh, also like discipline with, with, with the process and, and whatnot as well. So um, I really owe what I've, what I've done to uh, my teachers around me. And so you kind of doubled down then and, and decided to, I guess, hone your skills and work on everything. So from there, when was the next time maybe you hit it or what you considered maybe like a, a bigger role or got involved in a production that was maybe... Uh, upper uh, echelon. Yeah, so I, I so I did that when I was in grade four. I did a couple of um, uh, of uh, uh, short films with a director from from Winnipeg that um, you know he, he he liked me as an actor, so he mm-hmm. he uh, continued to to use me. Uh, and then we did this this feature that um, unfortunately didn't get made until. Uh, 2018, but I did it when I think it was after uh, I did it after Little Man, and um, we, they were supposed to sell it to Disney and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, you know, with production, sometimes they don't have enough money to edit. So we and 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 we were work, we did that movie for free, um, all the actors, um, because we believed in the process and we believed in the director and and the writing and. And whatnot. So, um, yeah, that that kind of, that happened after after Little Man, and unfortunately, that that didn't end up happening. Um, somebody ended up buying it, I think, uh, two years ago, um, and finishing and finishing it. But because it was it was a little old, I think there was some some stuff in the movie. It's still a good movie, but at the same time, it wasn't. Um, I think they used some backups that had some lines. Um, on the screen and whatnot. So it didn't look, uh, as, as mm-hmm. good as it, as it did probably back then. Um, but, uh, so that was the, the next step that I did after that. I did a, um, I did a, a Christmas movie with, uh, D Ray Davis, um, that was filmed in Toronto and I played an elf and I had a, a, a decent part in that as well. Um, then after that, I did. Uh, I did I had a couple of episodes, I believe, on uh, on Sunny Side, um, which was a, a great uh, a great little fun show um, as well. And then uh, working through and auditioning through Winnipeg, you, you get to know the uh, the um, the casting directors mm-hmm. as, as well. And so one of the casting directors helped me um, get the part in in Channel Zero, where I worked with. Um, Nick Antoska and uh, Olivia Ricardi and 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 everyone else in, in in Channel Zero, and that was that was an experience like, like no other as well. Um, I, I went I went through a period of time where I, I didn't really get anything or, or book anything. So uh, you know, as an actor in this business, that that's that's hard to go through. But at the same same time, it, it comes with the territory, and and you kind of just have to uh, you know keep pushing forward and, and trying to be the best you can be. Uh, but, but channel zero was definitely what I believe helped me get into, uh, helped me really get into the, the horror horror industry. And so, um, uh, what grew Hoyer was somebody in the show that, that really pushed for me to be, uh, to be in, the, in the scenes with him. And, uh, I can't, uh, can't thank him enough. And that's, uh, uh, I give tribute to him. Um, he uh, he was amazing, and he his his freedom and his creativity on set was so unique that 
um, I look at it as an inspiration for, uh, for future projects that I'm doing. And I mean, I thought you were fantastic in that. And that character um, is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you that thank character you. is terrifying um you had just said before that that you hadn't really been booking much and stuff before that how did you um how did you deal with that and overcome maybe i guess a lot of people maybe put in that position would you know maybe start to reconsider or think you know is it time that i do something different or i just live a a regular life i guess how did you overcome that feeling when things weren't as busy and yeah, um, I think um, looking back on on uh, those days, um, I had obviously I relied on my family to um, you know, keep me encouraged in, in acting and whatnot. But I also did just kind of you know live a, a normal life in the sense of hanging out with my friends and not trying to overthink it. I think that's the biggest thing that. Uh, we do as actors is we, uh, and I, I'm guilty for it as well. I, I do it to this day, but, um, it's, we, we overthink that, you know, whenever we do audition that, you know, Oh, like I have the chance to, uh, I, I should get this job. I'd be perfect for this job and whatnot, but, it, but it's not up to you in order to get the job. So all you can do is put your best foot forward. And then once, mm-hmm. once you do it, you know, you kind of just just forget about it because if it's if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I've I've always said that, and I, I think I will continue to say that. Um, and especially being a, a little person, you know, uh, this this world hasn't frankly opened up to having little people play uh, a regular role um, in a lot of uh, movies and TVs um, to this day. So uh, that is something that I'm trying to change as an actor um but um i'm still gonna push forward and and just be the best that i can be and and hopefully uh one day it'll it'll pay off to having um you know more little people uh in projects and i definitely i do think that especially after leprechaun returns that there's definitely a feel there that you're starting to maybe pioneer that although i know that <clears throat> that role is a little bit unique itself um i think a lot of people you probably notice yourself in the horror community they're very um very passionate but very fixated maybe on some of the old school things so for example you know robert england playing freddy krueger or uh, you know a lot of people attach a certain actor to a certain character and absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think with Leprechaun, it was the same. And I was actually very surprised. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but I was very surprised that there wasn't more people out there who had a gripe with the movie when it came out. Because to me, it seemed to be all one sided where everyone was like, that was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that was it was it was uh it was pretty pretty awesome. I, I do remember one thing on set of, of Leprechaun that that I was uh, kind of shocked about. Um, but one of the we, so we ended up so we did a test shoot for Leprechaun, and the test shoot was actually the um, the movie trailer um, mm-hmm. with the, doing the prosthetics and whatnot. We ended up shooting the trailer at the same time we did the test shoot, which was really cool. And I was like, oh, this is. I wasn't expecting it exactly. I thought it was just, you know, going to be a test shoot. I'm like, oh no, we're actually filming the trailer. I'm like, oh, okay, damn, okay, it's go time. Let's 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 freaking do this. So um, that was that was a lot of fun. We also learned a few things about uh, the character uh, during that process as well. But uh, I think after the trailer came out, it was. Well, the first week of shooting, and and one of the uh, the producers from from Blue Eyes Productions came up to me and, and sat me down and basically said, uh, "Hey, so you know, um, we, we we chose you for for, for the part. Um, so no matter what anybody says, um, you know, we 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 wanted you in this part right now, and that to me really kind of." Um, uh, I draw like kind of drop my heart and, and drop myself into 
to the character even more to know that um, the production uh, trusted me so much with this huge franchise that um, I now can just go go and, and be free on set to explore and, and create and and give 110% into this character because I know how um, important it is to, to the horror community as well. Um, I also didn't try to, you know, read too much about um, the horror community of Leprechaun and, 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 and what that all entails because I didn't want to overload myself with that information and then put too much pressure on myself. So um, I really just wanted to to be me in the character as well as know what um, they wanted, uh, you know, from the previous Leprechauns as well. It, it really seems like... Um you kind of thrive when you are allowed to be free on set and kind of give it your all. I know obviously you probably get, you know, direction and, and this and that, but it seems like you thrive more in that. Like I feel that a lot of people put in that position, like you said, regardless of anything, Leprechaun is a huge horror franchise and huge. it has huge. a huge fan base, even more so now I would think than when they were releasing them every couple of years. And the fact that you didn't, I, I honestly expected maybe a little bit of a different answer in the sense of um, maybe researching the character and looking at everything about it and trying to learn everything. It's um, it's actually crazy to hear that you didn't do that and then things turned out the way they did. Not that I, I don't feel like, because I, I don't feel like it was a rehash of the character at all. Mm-hmm. It's still, f- how can I explain it? It still felt like Leprechaun. It felt true to the feeling, I think, that Leprechaun is supposed to be, but it felt like a completely different, um, a completely different take, maybe even a, a, a more fun, a more, um, I, I really think it reintroduced it to like modern day because it had, yeah. it had gotten a little bit, I guess stale, it's a bit dated, you know, the movies are from the early nineties, most of them, to, mm-hmm. to bring it back maybe to a modern day but still keep the core element there. Yeah. And I think that that's, um, that's what the, the writer wanted as well, as well as everybody on the production team. Um, they wanted to bring those elements of the 1990s as well as modern day and kind of into a mix them. And, and for it to be, for it to be fun and also gruesome, which, that was the, the the kills in this movie are in, absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, being on set and and seeing them firsthand is then is one thing, but then you watch the playback of them after they film it, and <laughs> I mean, you, you, I don't know how many times my jaw was dropped watching these kills. Like it it was it was crazy, and um, they did a, a really really good job with that. I am, and, and this is not just because we're having this conversation, but like I, I would consider myself a huge Leprechaun fan, which kind of sounds a little bit ironic coming from <laughs> Ireland. But um, this, mo- like, I enjoyed it. I hadn't seen this movie. Um, so for anybody listening or listeners who have or haven't seen the movie, um, for a, a huge fan of the franchise, I hadn't actually seen the movie. Um, I know there was not issues, but it didn't release here at the same time. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it had to do with licensing or distribution, but, um, and then I just kind of never got around to it. And I'd always heard people talk about it and I was like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to watch that. And, um, so I rented it on iTunes and I watched it. And then the next night I rented it on YouTube and watched it. And the next night I rewatched it again. And then the following night I bought the Blu-ray. I like, I genuinely have to say, I, I really... A lot of times when they do, um, you know, maybe direct sequels to originals and stuff, it doesn't always turn out, you know, that good. And sometimes yeah. it feels like a cash grab, but none of this felt like anybody wanted to be there, especially you, just for the sake of, you know, oh, well, I played Leprechaun. It really felt like you wanted to, be, you were the character. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I tried to uh, to embrace the character as much as I as much as I possibly could, um, you know, practicing the lines and the accent uh, every day, um, listening to actually Irish podcasts to 
try and develop nice. more um, uh, of those of those unique um, sayings. Um, and, and the limes really helped with 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 that in the movie to to you know have more fun um, mm-hmm. with with them. And so I I I, I based it on actually uh, Heath Ledger's Joku. Um, is something that really inspired me through the Leprechaun. I saw a few um, uh, similarities in the sense of, of killing, but also having fun with the kill. It, it, it kind of uh, blended in in a way. Obviously, he thought it was Joker. I grew up on it, and I think I've seen that movie over over twenty five times, um, just because of his his performance yeah. in that. Um, but then also tying it again with the other movies of the franchise, more necessarily in the sense um, I, I watched uh, the first original Leprechaun actually when like a few few days before uh, filming in order to get just uh, to be fresh on it re- being the uh, the sequel to uh, to the second movie. Um, so that 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 really helped me even more just settle down into the character. And how, I'm just going to ask this question from a fanboy point of view, but how, um, how was the experience when you first looked at yourself in the mirror in full, in full costume? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, so my, it all, it all started, I think, at, um, cause we were doing the night shoot. So it started at, I think, um, like 4 PM or 3 PM. Um, that first time I put the, really put the makeup on. And it was a, it was a two part thing with also them putting um, the hair the hair on me as well. I remember that that process that first time took about seven hours, and so after about uh, you know three hours we took a break and I was like oh I'm looking I'm looking great already. And then after the the seven hours and, and looking in the mirror, it was truly eye opening and. I always find whenever I'm um, acting in a part that as soon as you put the the costume on um, or the prosthetics on or but as soon as it all comes together in one is really when you transform into the character. You can do all that. You can do all the work and, and, and put everything into it beforehand. But as soon as you put the costume on, and everything is is together. You transform into the character. At least that's what I find with 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 myself when I when I whenever I uh, uh, get a part. And especially with a character like Leprechaun, I mean, he's so visually he's so well known. Like I would I would put him up there, especially within the horror community. He's definitely um, he's a character. If somebody sees them, they know exactly who it is. Yes, oh for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that it it must have been a, a kind of I guess a bizarre but a, a really cool experience to be able to see yourself your own version of this yeah. character. Yeah, um and and I I I try and um not not say that uh you know my own version too much in a sense because it, it, yes it was my own version. Um but I, I, I also tried to, you know, be as true to the Leprechaun franchise because I obviously, you know, even before getting this, I've, I've heard of the franchise. I, I, I kind of knew what it was about um, in a sense. So uh, I, I, did re- I did really try to, to make it my own, but also stay true to the character uh, as well. But, but yeah, going back to um, seeing myself for the first time, it was definitely an eye-opening experience, knowing that, like, I think my first, one of my first thoughts when I put it on was, "Okay, I'm ready to kill to get my gold." Yeah, yeah. I can um, and hit. I guess the the makeup on this version as well seemed maybe a little um, even though we still had some humor and it was still fun in the movie, it, he seemed a little bit maybe scarier, a little bit more. Um, I guess vicious looking. Does that oh, make yeah. sense? Yeah, I think that would have had to do with also the uh, the teeth that yeah. I actually 
war throughout the uh, throughout the film uh, as well. What um what would you class as your favorite kill? Yeah, so my my favorite kill from the movie, um, damn, I think the splitting of uh, of um, the character was was so uh, unique mm-hmm. that it was. I mean, that was a kill that I think that was the first actual kill that I watched, and, and when I saw it happen with with the, uh, the solar panels, I was like, "Holy shit! Yeah, that's sick." Um, but I think Mel- I think Meredith's kill mm-hmm. with the sprinkler head, um, because she actually put that sprinkler head in her mouth and it was splitting out blood while. So it, while she had it in her mouth, and it looked so so real that that was, uh, I think, one of the kills that I probably rewatched um, about about five or ten times um, through playback. Uh, so that was also a great kill. But honestly, like every single kill in this movie is um, going back from the to the first kill um, to to Ozzy was. I mean, they, they were they were all. Like actually incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, they were, and they really fit with the. Uh, I think what 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 the franchise is already about. They were really inventive and fun, but sick at the same time. Oh yeah, oh so, like if yeah, yeah. I mean, and just seeing it, and if I was you know um, back when I was younger, if I was watching it for the first time, I would have probably got up and ran out of the room and started crying or something because of how vicious these kills look. And there's a, there's a scene I had talked to some other, um, some other podcasters and a few other people and everybody always mentions the scene in the kitchen for some, and and, and I love, I don't know why, but I actually rewatched that like several times. I, I kept rewinding it. Your, um, the lines there in the dialogue was like, um, I don't even know how to explain it. It was like you switched from um she asks you what a walkman is and you switch from being like, Yeah, forget it to like yeah. this really serious kind of, you know, tell me where the gold is and I won't rip you to shreds. Yeah. I thought that oh, yeah. was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean that goes to um you know, her, her character as well, uh, feeding off of each other. Um, and, and of course, uh, Stephen Kostansky, um, you know, directing it and, and giving us uh, some pointers to um, make the scene um, uh, as best as we could. Uh, that, that was a really fun a fun scene to shoot. Um, you, you always got to be uh, careful with, um, you know, spitting things out on, uh, on, um, on camera mm-hmm. uh, and towards uh, a- actors as well, um, because you know you obviously don't want to uh, you know spit directly on them. Mm-hmm. But um, that was that was a that was a lot of, of fun to, uh, to to play and um, and uh, it, it was a really it was just a great scene overall. Uh, and, and the way we bounced off each other was was uh, was great. I, I really loved it. Yeah, it really did work well. Um, would you be interested in in playing the character again? Oh, one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, that's if, something yeah, that you would definitely. If they, do. if, they uh, if they said, "Hey, you know, we're uh, we're going to shoot another one," would you would you come on? I would be like, "Let me know when and where, and I'll be there." Do you think it's something we may see? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, um, the, the response that, uh, the horror community, um, the Lep, Lep fans, um, showed was, was awesome. Uh, I don't know whether they, um, whether they will or will not, um, film again, but, uh, all I know is that, you know, it's, it's something that I, I'm definitely invested in and I would love to even be more a part of, of the franchise going forward. Um, I also started to, you know, write a little bit of a of a lep um, a movie myself. I think uh, because because of because of Leprechaun and, and the role I played is I, I really wanted to uh, you know 
keep keep playing the character and, and, and explore new ways to uh, show the world um, Leprechaun as well. And especially give it back to the fans. I mean, that's that's. I think that's actually the most important thing is to um, give back to them because they've been so supportive for how many years. Like, uh, you know, the, the least we could do is is uh, is give them another one as well. Yeah, I, I definitely, and I think it would be it would be well received and appreciated as well by the fans. That was something I was going to ask. I had seen several times in the past. You mentioned possibly. Um, direct in your own movies and stuff like that so you have actually put pen to paper with some ideas for the franchise absolutely absolutely right now i'm i'm currently working on uh another project um that i want to that i'm hopefully turning into a short but um that is definitely down the road something that uh, i want to continue writing um i have a bit of an idea for it um right now but uh that's about all i can i can say about that and is directing still in your um your vision is that still something you want to do yeah d- d- directing i i would love to uh to direct i i i i don't know how i would uh necessarily be as a director as i'm uh you know particular but also allow, allow the uh, the actors to be uh free with with what they've done and, and trust them um it's more necessarily um i notice a lot of things these days uh especially in the background of of uh, movies or, or tv shows um you know just some things that are a little bit out of place mm-hmm. and those are the one things where i think i would um really try and focus Especially like just being the director on on a, on a set. Obviously, you can't control control at all. But just making sure that those pieces are in the right spot so that it doesn't um, take uh, the audience out of it. Sometimes um, it's one thing that I, I've noticed that I would put into uh, me directing uh, as well as uh, a number of different things. But um, that's one thing that I would kind of focus on, as in um, you know, like background or. Um, objects as well as um cut for cutting scenes and, and whatnot. yeah is, is there any particular genre that you'd like to direct uh i think um i think a, a, an action an action uh almost like a horror thriller Mm-hmm. with some comedy in it as well. Like I want to, I would love to combine all the genres into one in a sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, it, it would be very hard to do, but at the same time, I, I feel that, um, I don't know if it's all, if they've ever done it all before and put everything into one. Um, but, uh, I think that it would be a very, uh, unique experience as well as fun to, to try that out. And I don't, I don't think um, you strike me as somebody who never really lets something being difficult stop them. Well, I, I think, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think that um, uh, through my life, I've kind of uh, embraced being a little person. Obviously, it's been, it's been hard sometimes, um, and you know, everybody goes through struggles. Um, I think that you know, little people have sometimes. Um, some of the some of the hardest struggles in, in life, just not being able to to reach, as well as not having things uh, built for them, um, or especially you know people with disabilities, they don't have things that are that are built for them, and um, we go through those struggles on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, and at the end of our life, I feel like it makes us uh, stronger and more willing to to take risks. And I think it's always great for for those things to have, say, somebody like yourself who kind of stands up and has proven, you know, that I can be taken seriously and I can be professional, I can be in these lead roles and kind of be a maybe a role model, not just for, you know, not for somebody with a handicap or anything like that, but people in general, I find it quite inspiring that... Uh, that you kind of don't take no for an answer. And I know you like to keep in shape as well, which is something that I think is even maybe nearly more admirable because, you know, I guess, you know, a lot of people would probably just hand their ticket in and just kind of, no, look, whatever. 
life is oh, yeah. o- life is over how did you or where did you cultivate that mindset to to kind of not let not let it define you i guess i think it started with with my uh with my father um he uh, he was and my mom actually they were both uh, physically active throughout their entire lives uh still are um and so the mindset of I think what really shaped me and in, into who I am today was uh, an example of, of my father telling me, um, you know, when I was playing sports and I, and I would get hurt a little bit, he, he would say, you know, you, you stay down and you come off the field. That's when I was playing soccer, you stay down and you come off the field or you get up and you play. Mm-hmm. But if you stay down when the whistle is blown, you 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 have to come off. That is my rule, and so I think that no matter what, even like I mean, it, it sounds hard to say, but back then I think that was a mindset of like, no matter how many times you get knocked down, you get back up again, and you push even harder in order to um, you know become your best self. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned um, before about you know somebody going through hard times, and I guess what what did you use even maybe to today how do you i know there's a lot of uh, anxiety and fear in the world right now with the pandemic and and just different things you know a lot of people struggle with mental health and depression and not feeling good about themselves is there anything that you would say to people to try and how how do you i guess um find the courage and motivation to kind of drag yourself through those moments so, yeah, I mean, I, I do definitely, I know people, people are going, especially right now, going through hard times. I, I think that, you know, I, I've gone through hard times. I, I continue to go through hard times. We are all going to go through hard times in our life. I think the most important thing that you can do is, um, at least what I, at least what I can do is, um, you know, work out, um, get into, get in that mindset as, but as well as, the most important thing is do what you love. Do something that you absolutely truly love that you wouldn't be able to live without. Because when you do that, you feel you you feel the happiest. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that will also, when you do that, that will translate into the rest of your life to uh, get you out of uh, out of those slumps. And I think that you know relying on your friends and your family are also important important. Um, but if that doesn't work for you, then find something that you truly love and do it every day for seven days. And I guarantee you by the end of the seventh day, you will feel a hell of a lot happier. Cause it's something that, um, I think a lot of times, and that, that seems like really practical advice. Cause a lot of people ask me about stuff like that when there's different people on the show, you know, about advice, maybe not even specific to the movie business, but just in general in life. And Mm -hmm. I think that seems like a really practical thing to say, because a lot of times, I mean, you go online nowadays and, you know, there's a lot of motion, motivational videos and, and podcasts, but I guess they're not broken down into maybe a simple, practical, you know, thing that a, a regular person can do. Absolutely. And I, I Absolutely. do, I do think like what, what you're saying about, um, you know, maybe working out and it doesn't even necessarily have to be lifting weights or anything, but even, you know, get out, get some exercise, clear your head and then maybe figure out what it is that makes you happy and, and start yeah. to focus yeah. on that. Get, getting outside, getting outside, no matter, um, you know, obviously if the weather's not the greatest, you don't necessarily want to be outside for too long, but even if you're outside and go for a walk for, for five minutes, that fresh air, at least uh, at least for me, um, is something that I've noticed uh, that helps me clear my mind and and um, allows me to you know think or listen to a podcast or, uh, or, or do certain things while I'm outside that you know make you happy because I do find that fresh air is probably something that um, you know we're not necessarily getting the most of right now mm-hmm. and so um, going outside for a walk is or even just sitting outside on a balcony and, and drinking your morning coffee like that those are simple things that we we do anyways during the day that we can take it a a, a step further and, and and be outside for and would you say that you're somebody who um 
who worries about the future or the past. I know a lot of people struggle with that kind of stuff where, you know, maybe they constantly think about what happened before or the fear of what the future might bring. I mean, yeah, I think at, at the at the at the end of the day, I, I you know, some, most, sometimes I wouldn't say most times um, think of, you know, my future um, very rarely besides like reflecting on my past. Do I think about the past? Mm-hmm. Um, I my, my my father does seem to remind me of, you know, my future and, and my past a little bit more than I would like to. And I I have to tell him sometimes, like, you know, pop side. You know, I, 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 let's just move on from this. Um, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, so I'm going to live every day, um, you know, as, as happy as I can be. And so I think, um, I, I try and take things and, and, and the days with, with a grain of salt because I know, um, that, you know, at the end of it all, as long as I'm doing what, what I want to do, that. I can be proud of myself for that. You know, obviously we're, we're going to have those days where we slack off and, and we, you know, are a bit lazy, but as long as you, you can, you can have those days and you can be like that for, for, you know, weeks to months, you know what I mean? But as long as you get yourself out of those, those times, mm-hmm. you're improving as a person, no matter how old you are or, or, you know, what your physical capabilities are, as long as you, are able to get yourself out of those slumps, you are growing as a person. And just, uh, I guess, a a little segue off of that. Is there any advice that you would give? Uh, A lot of people messaged me um, when they heard we were going to have a chat and had asked me, you know, I'm uh, I'm an aspiring actor. I want to get into the business. Is there any advice that you would give to somebody who's looking to start out or on what Uh, steps to take? Absolutely. Um, so the first, the first step is you can do that you can do is um, watch all the movies and TV shows that you possibly can. Learn from those as much as you can, but also take search up acting classes in your area that are affordable but also well known, um, and, and, and take those uh, as much as you can. This business. Let me, let me assure you that this business is not the most fun business that you can get into. It is gruesome. It is a bunch of no's. And as people, we don't necessarily like no's. But I tell you what, once you get your first taste of this business, there is nothing you want to do more than it. Mm-hmm. Because, because it is truly amazing. And if you work at your abilities, if you, if you work hard – and don't take no for an answer, then you will keep improving and improving. And everybody says, you know, they, they want to be a big star. Well, this big star, this star, this star. I've been doing that. I've been in this business for 16, 16, 17 years. Um, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, it's never an overnight success. Mm-hmm. People will say that, you know, it's a it's a ten year overnight success. And yeah, that, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, that, so that is what I think it's, it's truly about. Um, if you are, uh, if you give it your all, and, and you do your research and, and you keep learning and and whatnot, I think that at the end of the day, you will see that you know, really anybody can act if they put in the work. Mm-hmm. It, it, it comes down to that, but you got to be able to put in the work. You gotta be wanting to put in the work, and 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 then uh, you know anything's possible. Do you think that I guess in in any aspect of it, do you think that a lot of times that's what separates people is work ethic and just sheer determination? Uh, I think it's it's that as as long as well as um, you know skill skill is definitely involved yeah. in it as well. I find. Um, but somebody who, let's say there's not this person who doesn't necessarily is just or not, doesn't have as much skill, but they work at it and work at it and work at it and work at it. Um, and, and their work ethic is great and their determination is great. Yes, I do think that they can get there 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Do you have any favorite horror movies of your own? Is there anything you like to watch or you've really enjoyed in recent years? Um, the Purge is something that I've uh, I've actually enjoyed watching. Um, I don't know necessarily, you know, it is horror, but also uh, I think like fantasy uh-huh. area as well. But I, I, the Purge is something that I that I really enjoyed and and that I'll continue watching. Yeah, that's a fun one. Have you seen the TV show? I haven't seen the TV show yet. That is definitely something that I'm uh, I have on my list to watch. Yes, but like as I'm a huge fan of the Purge as well, and I would definitely recommend the TV show. Is fun. It's kind of a different storyline, I guess, but it it's fun. Awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Um, if you could star in any horror movie, is there anything that would crop like comes to mind? Other obviously other than Leprechaun, I think that like because that's quite a huge, <laughs> quite a huge franchise. Um, yeah. But is there anything else that you would like to get involved in or would have loved to have been? And it can be um, maybe writing, directing, acting. Yeah, I, uh, I I do also, I did also really enjoy uh, Chainsaw Massacre. I thought that was uh-huh. um, a, a great, a great movie. Um, so something along those lines, uh, obviously not, um, you know, replicating it but maybe um you know having an idea of like maybe uh, a kid um kind of comes along and, and learns about it and then becomes it mm-hmm. would be really cool to see yeah there's a lot of fun ideas out there i think for some of those franchises and i know texas chainsaw i think is getting another i'm not sure if it's a reboot this year yeah, I think I heard about that as well. Yeah, um, I think they're getting a reboot this year. I'll definitely, I'll definitely check that out. Um, okay, so I guess last thing really, because um, I know you're a busy guy, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, plans for the future or like what kind of, um, what have you, I know you probably can't talk about it outright, but what have you got maybe in the pipeline or where does the next two, three years look for you? Uh definitely creating this, this one project that I've been, um, on and off writing for probably about two years. Um, it's, it's actually called as of right now, it's called midget. And the reason I have it as such a strong term is to get people's attention off the start and one, get people aware of what the term actually means. Um, so, uh, that is definitely in the next two years. I want to have, I want to have it, um, filmed, edited, and put into festivals. Uh, but I think as of this year right now, um, there is one project, it's called uh, Mr. Sandman, that I'm also a part of. Uh, uh, so that is hopefully getting filmed at the end, by the end of this year. Um, and then there's a stream, um, is also something that I'm a part of, that I met actually through the um, New Jersey Horror Con. Um, people there... Um, wanted me involved in, in one of their future projects, which was, which was awesome. And I can't thank them enough for that. And so that is, um, hopefully able to happen as of right now with, with COVID and whatnot, I'm unable to, uh, fly over to, uh, New Jersey to film that. So that is kind of a, a dilemma that, uh, that we are in, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we can, uh, we can get that done as well. Our, um, are are horror cons maybe something that you see yourself doing in the future? Obviously, once the uh, pandemic has kind of calmed down. Oh, absolutely! I I love going and and giving back to the fans as as much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. I I love it. I I have such a great time. Um, you know, meeting new people and and them telling me stories of when they first saw it and and what they think and and whatnot. Um, I think that as a uh, um, as the le- as the leprechaun and leprechaun returns, uh, I uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than than get back to the fans that have supported the franchise for for years and years on end. Yeah, would you like? Has your experience? I guess a lot of people talk about um, how passionate the horror community are and how supportive the fans can be when they do like something. Have you felt that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
especially going to the the horror cons, there, there's been nothing but love. Yeah. And um, I, that, that that it makes it makes me feel good, but it also is like it's a testament to to the fans of how much they support it. So it's it's I love it. Um, it's it's awesome to see. Uh, it's I really like I'm speechless actually just thinking back on on the the horror um, cons that I've gone to and the, and the love that they've shown is is truly heartwarming. That's good. It's always good to hear um, that that's the case. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat today. Uh, anytime. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you having me on. Um, it's been fun and hopefully we'll get to see maybe some of your ideas for LEP in the future and uh, see you back with the, the costume on again. I hope so as well. Um, for anybody listening, guys, all of Lyndon's links will be down below. So if you're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, yeah? Uh, and Twitter as well, yeah. And Twitter. So all the links will be down below, guys, as always. Um, go and show your support and love and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Support First Class Horror on Patreon for as little as $1. Can't get enough of the horror? Carve yourself a deal from official merchandise only on Teespring. Join us on all social media at First Class Horror. We have such sights to show you.